Tonight, we've put the girls and the gangs on the American agenda. Traditionally, in neighborhoods where gang violence is a way of life, young women have stayed out of the fighting. The family of Simone Jasmine, better known as the Queen of the South, has rubbished claims that she was involved in murder or attempted murder. Step into the shadows of history, where the captivating narratives of five remarkable black female mafia bosses unfold, a hidden tapestry Hollywood often overlooks. Brace yourself for a riveting journey through the clandestine realms ruled by Stephanie St. Clair, a formidable force with an indomitable spirit. Discover the untold saga of Jemiker Thompson, whose ascent to power defied conventional norms. Meet Lulu White, a mysterious matriarch whose influence echoed through the clandestine corners of organized crime. The enigmatic Simone Jasmine emerges as a central figure, her story weaving a complex web of power, betrayal, and survival. Venture into the world of Thelma Wright, a name obscured by the shadows but undeniably etched in the annals of underworld history. In this exploration, we unravel the intricacies of these women's lives, exploring their motivations, challenges, and triumphs. Hollywood's lens may have overlooked their stories, but their legacies resonate with tenacity, resilience, and the audacity to defy societal expectations. Join us as we delve into the riveting tales of these five black female trailblazers, rewriting the narrative and bringing to light the obscured chapters of organized crime's unsung heroines. Stephanie St. Clair. Stephanie St. Clair. Born in Martinique in 1886, rose to prominence during the Prohibition era in the United States. Her journey from a Caribbean island to the heart of Harlem's underground world is a captivating tale that intertwines organized crime, resistance against Italian mobsters, and a fervent dedication to African-American rights and social justice. St. Clair's life is a mosaic of contrasts, from her notorious career as the queen of numbers to her activism against racial discrimination. This detailed exploration will delve into Stephanie St. Clair's background, her career in the illegal lottery business, her activism, clashes with the Italian mafia, and her enduring legacy. Born in the picturesque island of Martinique in 1886, Stephanie St. Clair's early life was shaped by the cultural richness and colonial influences of the Caribbean. At a young age, she immigrated to the United States, seeking new opportunities and a chance to redefine her destiny. Little did she know that her journey would lead her to the bustling streets of Harlem during a period of profound societal transformation, the Prohibition era. Stephanie St. Clair's notoriety primarily stemmed from her involvement in the illegal lottery, also known as the numbers racket which was thriving in Harlem during the Prohibition era. The numbers game involved betting on a set of numbers, and the winner would receive a payout based on the odds. St. Clair, with her keen business acumen, managed to establish a successful and independent gambling operation, earning her the title of the Queen of Numbers. St. Clair's empire extended beyond the confines of conventional criminal enterprises, and her influence within the Harlem community became palpable. Operating in a predominantly African-American neighborhood, she provided jobs and economic opportunities to many residents who faced limited prospects due to racial discrimination. St. Clair's rise to power in the numbers game was a testament to her business savvy and resilience in a male-dominated and racially charged underworld. One of the most remarkable aspects of Stephanie St. Clair's criminal career was her steadfast resistance against the influence of Italian mobsters, notably Dutch Schultz. During the Prohibition era, the Italian Mafia sought to expand its control over various criminal enterprises, including the lucrative numbers game in Harlem. St. Clair, however, refused to succumb to their pressure and challenged their attempts to take over her operations. The clash between St. Clair and Dutch Schultz reached its peak when he attempted to force her to share her profits. Unyielding and undeterred, St. Clair took the matter to court, exposing Schultz's criminal activities. This bold move not only highlighted her resilience, but also demonstrated her ability to navigate the legal system to protect her interests. 
St. Clair's resistance against the Italian mafia became a symbol of defiance and autonomy in the face of external threats. Beyond her involvement in organized crime, Stephanie St. Clair was a passionate advocate for the African-American community. In an era marked by racial segregation and discrimination, she used her influence and resources to fight against injustice. St. Clair actively participated in social and political activism, aligning herself with prominent figures advocating for civil rights. Her commitment to the cause was reflected in various endeavors. St. Clair supported African-American businesses, championed educational opportunities, and worked towards breaking down racial barriers. She used her platform to address systemic issues plaguing the community, leveraging her notoriety to draw attention to the struggles faced by African-Americans in a society fraught with prejudice. Stephanie St. Clair's clashes with the Italian mafia, particularly Dutch Schultz, cemented her legacy as a formidable figure in the history of organized crime. Her ability to resist external pressure, navigate legal challenges, and maintain control over her criminal empire set her apart from many of her contemporaries. The Queen of Numbers became a symbol of empowerment for those who faced adversity in a society that often marginalized them. St. Clair's legacy extends beyond her criminal exploits. Her activism for the African-American community left an indelible mark on the fight against racial discrimination. In a time when opportunities for success were limited for people of color, St. Clair's success in the criminal underworld and her dedication to social justice challenged prevailing narratives about race and gender. Stephanie St. Clair's life is a complex tapestry woven with threads of crime, resistance, and activism. From her humble beginnings in Martinique to becoming the Queen of Numbers in Harlem, St. Clair defied societal norms and carved a unique path in the Prohibition era underworld. Her clashes with the Italian Mafia, particularly Dutch Schultz, showcased her resilience and determination in protecting her community and business. Moreover, St. Clair's commitment to activism reflects a nuanced understanding of her position as a powerful figure within the African-American community. She utilized her influence not only for personal gain, but also to uplift those around her, challenging the systemic barriers that oppressed her people. Stephanie St. Clair, with her multifaceted legacy, remains an intriguing and influential character in the annals of American history, leaving an enduring impact on organized crime, civil rights, and the cultural fabric of Harlem. Jemiker Thompson Jemiker Queen Pin Thompson emerged as a prominent figure in the dark and turbulent world of drug tea during the late 20th century. Her involvement in the criminal enterprise particularly during the crack cocaine epidemic in Los Angeles in the 1980s, catapulted her into notoriety. This detailed exploration delves into Thompson's background, her criminal enterprise, the legal consequences she faced, and her post-criminal life marked by redemption and activism against drug addiction. Jemiker Thompson was born in 1962, growing up in the city of Los Angeles during a period marked by socio-economic challenges and the emergence of the crack cocaine epidemic. Raised in an environment rife with poverty and limited opportunities, Thompson found herself drawn into the allure of the lucrative drug trade that permeated the streets of her neighborhood. Her journey from a disadvantaged upbringing to becoming a major player in the criminal underworld is emblematic of the societal challenges that fueled the rise of drug lords during that era. Thompson's ascent in the drug trade was characterized by a combination of strategic alliances and ruthless tactics. As the crack cocaine epidemic swept through Los Angeles, she seized the opportunity to establish herself as a formidable force in the criminal hierarchy. The Queen Pin moniker bestowed upon her reflected her status as a powerful and influential figure within the drug tea network. During the 1980s, Thompson operated at the epicenter of the crack cocaine trade, a period marked by unprecedented levels of violence and addiction. As a key player in this illicit business, 
She oversaw a vast network involved in the production, distribution, and sale of crack cocaine. The allure of immense profits and the ruthlessness required to navigate the dangerous underworld propelled Thompson to the upper echelons of the criminal hierarchy. Thompson's criminal enterprise was not only characterized by the scale of her operations, but also by the strategic alliances she forged. The drug trade during this era was highly competitive and marked by territorial disputes. Thompson navigated this treacherous landscape by forming alliances with other influential figures, ensuring the protection of her interests and expanding her influence. Violence became an integral part of Thompson's operations. Clashes with rival factions, internal disputes within her organization, and the constant threat of law enforcement posed significant challenges. Thompson's rise to power was punctuated by a series of violent incidents, underscoring the brutal nature of the drug trade during that tumultuous period. The inevitable collision with law enforcement finally caught up with Jemaker Thompson in the early 1990s. Arrested and facing serious charges related to drug tea and other criminal activities, Thompson found herself at a crossroads. Faced with the prospect of a lengthy prison sentence, she made a fateful decision that would alter the course of her life. In a surprising turn of events, Jemaker Thompson chose to cooperate with law enforcement. This decision, often referred to as flipping or becoming a snitch, involved providing crucial information about her criminal associates, operations, and the inner workings of the drug trade. Thompson's cooperation was instrumental in dismantling parts of the criminal network she had once helped build. While her decision to cooperate may have been driven by a desire for leniency in sentencing, it also marked a significant shift in her relationship with the criminal underworld. Thompson's testimony led to the arrest and conviction of several high-profile individuals involved in drug tea, solidifying her reputation as a key informant. After serving her sentence, Jemaker Thompson embarked on a journey of redemption and transformation. Her post-criminal life was marked by a commitment to distancing herself from the world of drugs and crime that had defined her earlier years. Thompson became an advocate against drug addiction, using her personal experiences to highlight the devastating consequences of a life entrenched in the criminal underworld. One of the notable aspects of Thompson's post-criminal life is her willingness to speak openly about her past and the mistakes she made. Through interviews, public appearances, and even a memoir, she shared the gritty details of her life as a queen pin and the toll it took on her and those around her. This transparency and vulnerability endeared her to some while drawing criticism from others who viewed her as trying to capitalize on her criminal past. Thompson's advocacy against drug addiction extended beyond personal narratives. She became involved in community outreach programs, working with organizations focused on rehabilitating individuals with a history of substance abuse. Through these efforts, she aimed to prevent others from falling into the same destructive cycle she once experienced. While some skeptics questioned the sincerity of Thompson's transformation, others saw her as a living testament to the possibility of redemption. Her journey from orchestrating a criminal empire to actively working against the very industry she once thrived in was a compelling narrative of personal growth and societal change. Jemaker Thompson's story is emblematic of the complexities surrounding individuals involved in organized crime. Her rise to infamy as a queen pin and subsequent cooperation with law enforcement are reflective of the intricate web of motivations and circumstances that drive individuals into a life of crime. Thompson's legacy extends beyond her criminal past, as she continues to influence conversations around drug addiction, rehabilitation, and the possibility of redemption. The impact of Thompson's cooperation with law enforcement should not be understated. By providing crucial information that led to the dismantling of criminal networks, she played a pivotal role in the fight against drug tea. Her actions, while controversial within the criminal underworld, contributed to the broader goal of dismantling the infrastructure that perpetuated the crack cocaine epidemic 
In terms of her post-criminal life, Thompson's advocacy work has left a lasting impact on efforts to address drug addiction and rehabilitate individuals with a history of substance abuse. Her willingness to share her story, warts and all, has humanized the struggles faced by those caught in the throes of addiction and crime. Jemaker, Queen Pin. Thompson's life is a tapestry woven with the threads of criminal enterprise, cooperation with law enforcement, and post-criminal redemption. Her journey from a troubled upbringing in Los Angeles to the heights of the crack cocaine trade, followed by a fall from grace and subsequent redemption, paints a nuanced picture of the challenges faced by individuals in vulnerable communities. Thompson's legacy is multifaceted. On one hand, she will forever be remembered as a key player in the drug trade during a tumultuous period in American history. On the other, her cooperation with law enforcement and subsequent advocacy work against drug addiction demonstrate the capacity for change and redemption, even for those deeply entrenched in a life of crime. As society grapples with the ongoing challenges of drug addiction, organized crime, and the repercussions of historical epidemics like the crack cocaine era, Jemaker Thompson's story serves as a reminder of the complexities inherent in addressing these issues. Her life invites reflection on the systemic factors that contribute to the rise of individuals like her and the potential for transformation, both on a personal and societal level. Lulu White at the turn of the 20th century, amidst the jazz-filled streets and the vibrant cultural tapestry of New Orleans, one woman emerged as a central figure in the city's clandestine underworld. Lulu White, a name synonymous with opulence, power, and the intricacies of the S-Trade, left an indelible mark on the history of New Orleans. Her most renowned establishment, Mahogany Hall, stood as a testament to the tumultuous dynamics of race, power, and S during the Belle Epoque era. Lulu White's origins are shrouded in mystery, adding to the allure of her persona. Born in the late 19th century, little is known about her early life or family background. Some sources suggest she was of Creole descent, while others speculate on a Caribbean heritage. This enigmatic beginning set the stage for a life filled with intrigue and controversy. White's ascent to prominence in New Orleans coincided with the city's burgeoning reputation for music, culture, and a vibrant nightlife. As the Belle Epoque era unfolded, White navigated the complex social and racial dynamics of the time, establishing herself as a formidable figure in the city's underbelly. During the early 20th century, New Orleans was rife with brothels that catered to a diverse clientele. The city's laissez-faire attitude towards vice and its racially diverse population created an environment conducive to the flourishing of the S-Trade. Lulu White, seizing the opportunity, ventured into this world with a keen business acumen. Lulu White's most famous establishment, Mahogany Hall, transcended the typical image of a brothel. Situated in the heart of the Storyville district, Mahogany Hall became a symbol of luxury, decadence, and unbridled excess. Its opulent interiors and extravagant offerings attracted both local elites and visitors, establishing it as an iconic institution in the history of New Orleans' red light district. One of the defining features of Mahogany Hall was its association with interracial S-work. At a time when racial segregation and discrimination were pervasive, Mahogany Hall dared to challenge societal norms by providing a space where individuals of different races could come together, albeit within the confines of the S-Trade. This aspect of White's business ventures added a layer of complexity to the already intricate social fabric of the era. Lulu White's life and Mahogany Hall left an indelible imprint on the cultural landscape of New Orleans. The allure of her palace, coupled with the taboo nature of her business, contributed to the mystique surrounding her persona. Mahogany Hall became not only a symbol of decadence, but also a reflection of the city's acceptance of diversity and defiance against societal norms. The life of Lulu White has become a subject of historical fascination, captivating scholars, historians, and enthusiasts alike.
Her story provides a unique window into the complexities of race, power, and S during the Belle Epoque era, offering valuable insights into a period marked by both progress and prejudice. Lulu White's legacy extends beyond the confines of Storyville. Her role in challenging societal norms surrounding S-work and interracial relationships paved the way for future discussions on gender dynamics and the agency of women in the early 20th century. The existence of Mahogany Hall serves as a testament to the resilience and resourcefulness of women navigating a male-dominated world. In the heart of New Orleans' vibrant history, Lulu White emerges as a compelling and enigmatic figure. Her journey from obscurity to notoriety, her business ventures in the S-Trade, and the legacy of Mahogany Hall all contribute to a rich tapestry of narratives that unravel the complexities of the Belle Epoque era. Lulu White's life invites us to explore the intersections of race, power, and S, providing a nuanced understanding of a time marked by both progress and prejudice. As we navigate the corridors of Mahogany Hall through the annals of history, Lulu White stands as a testament to the indomitable spirit that shaped the cultural landscape of New Orleans during a bygone era. Thelma Wright Thelma Wright, known as the Gangster Queen of Philadelphia, rose to notoriety in the 1980s due to her involvement in drug tea. Her life story is a compelling narrative of crime, adversity, and ultimately redemption. This detailed exploration delves into Thelma Wright's background, criminal involvement, legal consequences, and her inspiring post-criminal life. Thelma Wright's early life was marked by the challenges of growing up in an environment rife with poverty and limited opportunities. Born in Philadelphia, she navigated a world where the lure of quick riches and the dangers of the streets were omnipresent. The socioeconomic circumstances of her upbringing set the stage for her later involvement in criminal activities. Wright's entry into the world of crime was intertwined with her marriage to Jackie Wright, a man deeply enmeshed in the drug trade. Jackie's involvement in drug tea catapulted the couple into the heart of Philadelphia's criminal underworld. Upon her husband's untimely death, Thelma found herself at a crossroads, facing the decision of whether to continue the illicit operations or distance herself from the dangerous world she had become entangled with. Despite the risks and legal implications, Thelma chose to carry on her late husband's criminal enterprise. This decision thrust her into a leadership role within the drug tea operation, earning her the moniker Gangster Queen of Philadelphia. Thelma's role in the criminal underworld became a symbol of the challenges faced by women navigating a male-dominated and perilous realm. The inevitable consequences of Thelma Wright's criminal activities caught up with her, leading to legal repercussions. Law enforcement agencies targeted her drug tea operation, and in the early 1990s, Thelma faced charges related to drug distribution and conspiracy. The legal battle that ensued would become a turning point in her life. Wright's trial shed light on the complexities of her involvement in the drug trade. The prosecution argued that she played a pivotal role in managing the criminal enterprise, while the defense contended that she was coerced into continuing her late husband's operations due to threats and fear for her life. Despite the defense's efforts, Thelma was convicted leading to a prison sentence that would alter the trajectory of her life. Thelma Wright's time behind bars provided an opportunity for reflection and self-discovery. Serving her sentence became a transformative experience, prompting her to confront the choices that had led her down the path of crime. While incarcerated, she became determined to turn her life around and make amends for the mistakes of her past. During her imprisonment, Wright participated in various rehabilitation programs, including educational initiatives and counseling. These experiences facilitated personal growth and instilled a desire for redemption. Thelma's resilience and commitment to change became evident as she worked towards rebuilding her life within the confines of the prison system. Upon her release from prison, Thelma Wright faced the daunting task of reintegrating into society and overcoming the stigma associated with her criminal past. Remarkably, she embraced this challenge with determination, 
charting a course towards a vastly different future. One of the remarkable aspects of Thelma Wright's post-criminal life is her transition into the world of literature. Motivated by the desire to share her story and inspire others, she penned her autobiography, providing a candid account of her experiences. The book offered readers a rare glimpse into the intricacies of the drug trade, the challenges faced by women in criminal enterprises, and the profound impact of choices on one's life. In addition to her foray into writing, Thelma Wright embarked on a career as a motivational speaker. Drawing from her own journey of transformation, she delivered powerful speeches that resonated with audiences across diverse backgrounds. Wright's motivational talks centered on themes of resilience, redemption, and the capacity for positive change, inspiring others to overcome adversity and make constructive choices in their lives. Thelma Wright's commitment to making amends extended to community engagement and outreach. Recognizing the importance of addressing the root causes of crime and poverty, she became involved in various charitable initiatives aimed at empowering disadvantaged communities. By leveraging her experiences, she sought to contribute to the betterment of society, advocating for education, mentorship, and community development. Thelma Wright's life journey is a testament to the transformative power of redemption. From her early struggles in a challenging environment to her involvement in crime and subsequent incarceration, Wright's story serves as a source of inspiration for those grappling with adversity. Her resilience, commitment to change, and dedication to giving back to the community have left an indelible mark on her legacy. Thelma Wright's life is a complex tapestry woven with threads of crime, redemption, and the enduring pursuit of a better path. From her roots in poverty to her ascension as the gangster queen of Philadelphia, Wright's journey captivates with its twists and turns. The chapters of her life, marked by criminal involvement and legal consequences, ultimately lead to a powerful narrative of transformation. Thelma's post-criminal life, characterized by authorship, motivational speaking, and community engagement, stands as a beacon of hope and a testament to the human capacity for change. Her story encourages reflection on the factors that lead individuals into a life of crime and the potential for redemption, resilience, and positive impact on both personal and societal levels. Simone Jasmine. Thanks to the likes of Narcos and Scarface, among others, we tend to think of drug lords as men. While that's usually right for the most part, Simone Jasmine, the so-called Queen of the South, certainly broke the mold. She is alleged to have led the notorious cartel gang, which distributes drugs in a number of townships in South Africa. According to sources, she grew to become a wholesale drug supplier via a number of distribution channels, and one police source estimates that the gang she led made around R200,000 a day in profits. Some of that money was then invested in property and a fleet of Uber vehicles, among other operations. Reportedly, Jasmine, known as Moni on the streets of Wentworth, was introduced to gang life by a boyfriend. One of her nicknames was Queen of the South, a reference to a popular Mexican telenovela which many observers said mimicked the 35-year-old's life. She was reportedly gunned down by assassins who had been staking out her house in Marine Drive. They are said to have waited for her to enter an e-hailing cab before firing at least six bullets at close range. The family of Simone Jasmine, the so-called Queen of the South, maintains she was not guilty of any of the charges that were leveled against her. But contrary to their claims, Jasmine has been linked to a number of K in Durban, a major area in South Africa. At the time of her K, Jasmine had been out on bail for murder and attempted murder charges. These untold stories of Stephanie St. Clair, Jemiker Thompson, Lulu White, Simone Jasmine, and Thelma Wright illuminate a rich tapestry of black female resilience and power within the criminal underworld. While Hollywood often fixates on narratives centered around white or black male figures, these women's tales break the mold, offering a compelling narrative of strength, ambition, and tenacity. 
their absence from the cinematic spotlight underscores the need for more inclusive storytelling. Acknowledging the diverse and formidable roles black women have played in shaping history, crime, and empowerment. These narratives beg the question, what other captivating stories remain hidden in the shadows of cinematic history, waiting to be brought to light?